So here is something I've seen a couple different people doing uh, when they want to use, still use the system, but use it for an outside service like Chewy or Walmart, Shopify, et cetera, different marketplace, kind of just a, something to get them going, right? Uh, so what they've been doing right now is updating and coming into the system. And either there's two different ways. One, they're adding a custom group in here like this one. And they're just calling it like shop and just putting the U.S. marketplace in there. Okay. And what they're then doing, and then they'll have a region called shop, right? And you can see here, it's just going to be called shop. And you can look, um, copy this and go into your forecast. And you'll see... They now have one called shop. Granted, it's using the US velocity, but what they can do is they can come in and put a manual velocity into it, right? Okay. And then that is what they can use for all their inventory, for really kind of whatever they're they're doing. The only problem is, is it's gonna pull FBA inventory from the US marketplace, which is not ideal, but at least now you can have a forecast to understand what's going on and kind of base something, right? It's it's not going to be exact, right? This is a workaround, but it's a way that some people have been actually uh, using that, okay? Another way takes a little bit more work, but I have seen some other people doing this is instead, what they do is they copy this product, right? make a blank shell. So they make an exact duplicate of a product, right? So they'll come in here, they'll make a new product, whether they do it in the bulk actions under settings or they do it individually, they'll make the individual, you know, the new product, they'll do all this kind of stuff. And then they will call that again, shop. They'll select it for a U.S. region, right? They'll go, all right, I'm going to group this by U.S. I'm going to make U.S. I'm going to give it, you know, my, my Shopify SKU, and I'm going to go through, give it supplier, give it all that information. And then it's not going to have any FBA inventory, right? It's just going to strictly have this random region called shop that they can go and input a forecast and just kind of have data around that. Okay. So that is another way that I've seen people leveraging that. Right. So um, these are kind of the two workarounds until we get it going. I know it's work. I know it's bulky and clunky and yada, yada, yada. But these are workarounds that I'm seeing people actively use and having success with. So if you're willing to do the work, these are two options that you could do today. Um, you know, especially if you have a VA, you could give them kind of this process and say, hey, let's try this for two or three products. Let's see if it works. And if it does, you can cascade it into others um, or just focus on your top 20 uh, top 20% of your products to do this because it is a little bit more work. And at least then you have some, some gauge on your best sellers, uh, inventory levels that is. And then, uh, hopefully by that time we have some Shopify integration. So, uh, hopefully these are some, some ways that you can manipulate this, work it around and, uh, and go from there. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully this gets you going. And like I said, I, I would love to snap my fingers and have this online. We just have so much in our backlog, guys are going 24 seven. So, um, trust me, it's, it's something that's on the list and we're working towards. All right. Later.